was seized by the CBP. That is a direct result of Biden administration. During the first U.S.-China committee hearing, Representative Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene completely embarrassed herself in a way that I don't think she even realized. As uh, she attempted to criticize the Biden administration, yet in doing so, she actually complimented him and criticized Donald Trump. So I'm going to get to this clip. Uh, this is something, this is a point that I've heard other Republicans try and make, and every time they make it, I question whether or not they even realize what they're saying, but you're going to see it. I'm also going to get to a very interesting fact that you may not be aware of surrounding this issue. So here it is. So this is uh, Taylor Green discussing fentanyl being captured at the border. I want you to know that in 2020, there were 4.8 thousand pounds of fentanyl seized by CBP. But in 2021, fiscal year 2021, it increased to 11.2 thousand pounds of fentanyl was seized by the CBP. That is a direct result of Biden administration failure policies. Now, here we are in to date, to date, fiscal, fiscal year 2023, they have already seized, or seized 12.5 thousand pounds of fentanyl. The Biden administration is failing this country by not protecting our border and securing our border and stopping Chinese fentanyl from being brought into our country illegally by the cartels and people are dying every single day because of it. Did you catch that? In fact, there are several mistakes. I'm being kind here. Mistakes, lies in this statement. But the obvious mistake that she is making here in her attempt to criticize Joe Biden is that under Joe Biden, they have caught more fentanyl at the border. They have stopped more fentanyl from entering the country than under Donald Trump. How is that a criticism of Joe Biden? That's a criticism of Donald Trump. <laughs> you, you are essentially admitting here that under Trump, more fentanyl crossed the border. Joe Biden, though, stepped it up and caught thousands of pounds more of fentanyl than Donald Trump did. Yet this is supposed to be a criticism of Joe Biden. And I've seen other Republicans try and use this point as a way to slam the administration. I'm sure there are better ways <laughs> that you could devise to try and criticize uh, the administration. This is not one of them. So let me get to the data here before I get to a very interesting fact that I think a lot of people are not aware of. But uh, here, so this is U.S. Customs and Border Protection, the CPB. This is their drug seizures. Uh, I put fentanyl here in the drug type, so it's clear what we are talking about. So uh, the dark bar here, uh, the gray bar, 2023. So you see a lot of fentanyl has been captured at the border uh, this year, a lot more than previous years. Um, and you see the lowest number here is 2020. Under Donald Trump, they caught the least amount of fentanyl. Now, I'm not sure why that is. It's possible production has ramped up. It's possible uh, Trump doesn't properly or didn't properly fund the government and I don't know, things just got through. But regardless, there is no real attack here on the Biden administration in terms of seizures at the border. So you can either say, well, they have stepped it up and caught more, meaning Trump caught less and let a lot more go through, or there's more production of fentanyl and the Biden administration is keeping up with that. Regardless, the, <laughs> the idea that you would use this to slam Biden, that they are catching these drugs and stopping them from entering is uh, bizarre to say the least. Now, in terms of the other point that she attempted to make here about how um, the cartels, the illegals are bringing in the fentanyl, that's actually not at all true. So this is from the Cato Institute. This is a libertarian think tank. We're talking about a right-wing think tank here, but they acknowledge the facts. U.S. citizen consumers fund fentanyl smuggling. So that is uh, not as important as this. <laughs> U.S. citizens are fentanyl traffickers. Fentanyl is primarily trafficked by U.S. citizens. The U.S. Sentencing Commission publishes data on all federal convictions 
which includes demographic information on individuals convicted of fentanyl trafficking. Figure 1 shows the citizenship status of fentanyl traffickers for 2018 to 2021. Every year, U.S. citizens receive the most convictions by far. In 2021, U.S. citizens accounted for 86.3% of fentanyl tracking, uh, trafficking convictions compared to just 8.9% for illegal immigrants. U.S. citizens are the ones that are largely bringing in fentanyl. And it's for obvious reason. It's tougher to catch them than it is to catch somebody who is not a U.S. citizen at the border. Yet, all of the hoopla, all of the anger, all of the sentiment around um, drugs coming in from the borders, it's, it's first of all, it's usually directed at Mexico, but because this is a China committee, now they change the argument to, oh, it's China, which it is China, largely Chinese fentanyl is, is what takes up the majority of, of fentanyl. So that's actually accurate, but they'll change it next week to it being Mexico. So <laughs> it's going to, you know, it's going to shift depending on who the, the target is. But it's important to point out, if anyone brings up how, oh, we got to stop the illegals, um, it's important to bring up how it's actually U.S. citizens that are trafficking in uh, drugs. Now, when it comes to actual solutions, because this is what matters. So drugpolicy.org here has a great breakdown in terms of uh, five bold. I wouldn't even call these bold. They're just solutions based on actual facts and data for uh, dealing with the overdose crisis. So prevention centers, um, these are, I'm not sure how common these are in in America, uh, but they're fairly common um, in, in Canada. These are essentially supervised, as they write here, supervised consumption sites. They are a proven approach in reducing drug-related deaths. They offer sterile, controlled settings for people to use pre-obtained drugs under the supervision of trained professionals who can intervene in case of an overdose or other medical event. So essentially, for people that, that are, you know, trying to get better. These sites exist to ensure that if they're going to use these drugs, they're using it in a setting where they're being supervised and that the uh, product they are using is not contaminated in any way that will um, cause a, an overdose. So that is one potential solution. Another one is um, drug checking and safe supply. So of course, uh, when it comes to fentanyl, most people are not trying to use fentanyl. It's what's often injected into the heroin supply. So you can, there are ways to test the drugs to ensure that uh, they are uh, fentanyl free. So that's another way to potentially stop um, overdoses. Another one is safety first. This is a revolutionary drug education program. So as they write here, telling teens just say no doesn't work. Unlike DARE and other abstinence only programs, DPA's drug education program Safety First is based on the philosophy of harm reduction. It is designed to foster open and honest conversations about drugs and drug-related risks like overdose among teens, educators, and parents. Another one is um, low barrier access to certain therapies that allow people to get better. And another one is all drug decriminalization. And I've discussed this a number of times in several videos over the past several years where Portugal in particular, they decriminalized all drugs about t uh, 20 years ago and put a lot of their money and effort into healthcare to prevent people from getting addicted, or if they are addicted, then help them through that as a health issue instead of a, a criminal issue. And Portugal was once the uh, overdose capital in, uh, in Europe. It is now at the bottom of the list. The least amount of overdoses in Europe simply because they decriminalize drugs and put effort and money into healthcare. So the solutions for this problem are out there, but you're not going to find any uh, answers from people like Marjorie Taylor Greene.